The War for Mansell by John Bunyan is told by Ethel Barrett. Copyright 1998. Christian Light Publications, Incorporated. Harrisonburg, Virginia. Golden Days. After the execution, Emmanuel came down to see and to visit and to comfort Mansell. He was pleased, he said, for by this act they had proved to him that they wanted to observe his laws, that they had respect for his honor. And he continued to turn their government, their lives, upside down. To complete the government shakeup, he commissioned Captain Experience as a replacement for the officers lost. When this news got out, the hearts of the townsmen were transported with joy, for he was one of their very own, born and bred in the town. He had for his lieutenant one Mr. Skillfill, and the officer who carried his colors was Mr. Memory. True, he was a young man, but he was calmly, articulate, and very successful in his undertakings. And then things began to happen. It was as if all things had become new, or certainly they were in the process of becoming. First, a new charter. Yes, the prince laid the old one by, and said, That which is getting old and decaying is ready to vanish away. He declared that man's soul should now have another, and it should be a better one, a new one, and it was. It gave them full and everlasting forgiveness of all wrongs done against Shaddai, Emmanuel, their neighbors, and themselves. It gave them the law and Emmanuel's testament. It gave them a portion of the very grace that dwelt in Emmanuel's heart. It gave them free access to Emmanuel and his palace at all seasons. And it gave them the full power and authority to seek out and destroy any diabolins who might be found straggling in or about the town. Mr. Knowledge, the recorder, read the new charter in the marketplace. Then it was engraved on the doors of the castle in letters of gold so they might always have it in their view. As this was being done, the bells rang, the minstrels played, the people rejoiced, the captain shouted, the silver trumpet sounded, and the colors waved in the wind. Any diablins still in town were glad to go hide their heads, for they looked like them that had been long dead. Then a new ministry. For, said the prince, unless you have teachers and guides, you will not be able to know and do the will of my father. At this news, the whole town came running. So happy were they with their new prince and so eager to do his pleasure. I will establish two among you, he said. One, a native of Mansell. You know him well. Your old recorder, Mr. Conscience. Conscience stepped forward. He looked in fine fettle, well exercised and glowing with health. They looked at him with new respect. He will teach you and guide you in so far as he is capable, Emmanuel went on. I am making him your minister to instruct you in domestic matters of morals and government. The other is from my father's court, my father's own Lord High Secretary, dictator of all his laws, a person as skilled in all mysteries and knowledge of mysteries as is my father or me. Indeed, he is one with us in nature. He is the very spirit of my father and me. The Lord High Secretary stepped forward. A great hush came over the crowd, for he was the one who sat at the table during the love feast and explained the riddles and unraveled the mysteries. And he was the one who had stepped forward and put his hands on the hands of the executioners and given them the power to kill the hard-to-die diabolins. And this is he, said the prince, who must be your chief teacher, for it is he and he only who can teach you clearly in all high and supernatural things. It is he who can bring lost things to your remembrance. It is he who can put life and vigor into your heart. And it is he who can help you draw up petitions to my father and me. 
Without him, you can do nothing. The hush remained over the crowd. They were soberly impressed. Do nothing without his advice. He is your chief teacher, your highest guide. Make your requests to us, my father and me, through him. He is your source of power. Take heed how you treat him. Do not grieve him. Emmanuel turned back to conscience. You must confine yourself to civic and literal natural duties. You must not attempt to presume to be a revel revealer of mysteries that are kept close in the bosom of Shaddai. No one can reveal them but my father's secretary only. So be his scholar and a learner, even as the rest of man's soul. Go to him for information and knowledge. Teach Mansell, he concluded, but if they will not hearken, teach them with whips and chastisements. And new robes. And now I have something for you to set you apart, he said. And he called his attendants, and they brought forth out of his treasury beautiful robes, glistening white. These are my livery, a badge of honor, by which you will be known as mine. Wear them daily so that all will know you are set apart, belonging to me, and keep them clean, for if they be soiled is a dishonor to me. Tuck them up to keep them from the ground. Don't let them drag in the dirt. But if you should sully them, come to me quickly through the Lord High Secretary and tell me about it, so that I may cleanse them again. Next he charged them to treat their captains well, to love them, nourish them, encourage them, for they were guards against the enemy. And if they should at any time be sick or weak and so not able to perform their offices, not to slight them nor despise them, but rather strengthen them and encourage them. He had the captain stand forth. Faith, good hope, love, guile, guileness, and patience. If these captains be weak, he said, then Mansell cannot be strong. If they be strong, then Mansell cannot be weak. Your safety lies in their health. And then he cautioned them to beware of the diabolins still lurking in the town, ready to spring in an unguarded moment. Hearken diligently to me, he said. They are implacable. They study and plot to attempt to bring you to destruction. They are the avowed friends of Diabolus. They used to lodge with their prince in the castle when unbelief was a mayor of Mansell. But since my coming, they have scurried to the back streets and to the walls, and have made themselves dens and caves and holds and strongholds therein. You can never utterly rid yourselves of them, but you can be diligent and quit you like men. Observe their holds, find out their haunts, assault them, make no peace with them. Then he called some of the lingering diabolins by name. The Lord Adultery, the Lord Murder, the Lord Anger, the Lord Lusciousness, the Lord Deceit, the Lord Evil Eye, Mr. Drunkenness, Mr. Reveling, Mr. Idolatry, Mr. Witchcraft, Mr. Variance, Mr. Emulation, Mr. Wrath, Mr. Strife, Mr. Sedition, Mr. Heresy. They are skulkers in Mansell. But how shall we know them? they cried. Look well into the laws of Shaddai, he answered, and there you will find their descriptions and their characteristics. If you let them run about the town, they will poison your captains and turn you into a barren waste. Heed their descriptions well, for some of them will appear to be very religious. They will do you more mischief if you do not watch than you can dream of. Do not let them deceive you, Emmanuel finished. They are always in hiding. Apprehend them whenever you find them. Put them to death. Watch and pray, he said as he dismissed them. He said it softly, and yet it seemed to thunder and echo and re-echo and stay in the very air. It did not seem possible that things would get any better, but they did. For these were the golden days. Mansell was like the signet upon Emmanuel's right hand, a town redeemed from the power of Diabolus, 
A town should I valued and Emmanuel loved to dwell in. The wonder of it. Teachers, guides, captains, white robes. It was more than it ever dreamed of. Now there was unbroken fellowship. There was not a day that the elders of Mansell neglected to come to him or he to them. They would walk and talk together of all the great things that he had done and was yet to do for Mansell. This would he often do with Lord Mayor Understanding, and Lord Willby Will, and Mr. Conscience, and the new recorder, Mr. Knowledge. How they hung on his every word. They wanted to be together continually. Every day was a feast day now. He spread delicacies before them in abundance, and he never sent them away empty. Either they must have a ring, a gold chain, a bracelet, a white stone, or something. So dear was Mansell to him. So lovely was Mansell in his eyes. And as if all these things were not enough, he put Mr. God's peace over them as governor of the town. Yes, these were the golden days. There were no jars, no chiding, no unfaithful doings in all the town of Mansell. Everyone kept to his own job and observed his duties, so that nothing was to be found but harmony and joy and good health. The influence of Mr. God's peace was in the air like a sweet perfume. The friendship of the Lord High Secretary gave them joy and power that they had never known before. And this lasted all that summer.